Hi and welcome back. Those of you that have seen a few of my videos will know that um, one of the things that I like to do to practice my watercolour painting is to try and paint at least one sky a day, be it just a sky practice in a sketchbook, um, trying out ideas, or maybe um, a sky for a particular type of sky um, for a painting that I want to do. So I thought I'd share today one of my practice skies. This is on the back of a piece of, the back of an old painting on a piece of Milford paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so that the paint will run down. All I've got in mind today is that I want to paint a very loose, um, quite dramatic and atmospheric stormy sky over the sea. So I'm gonna have a low horizon. I'm just going to mix up all the old paint from my palette with a little bit of extra sepia and Payne's Grey on there uh, just to try and get some atmosphere when I paint this sky wet in wet. I want the clouds to look as if they're coming in over the sea in the distance sort of rolling in across the bay um, and I also want to make it look like it's, it's raining using um, gravity to help me achieve that effect um, as the paint runs down the page wet in wet. You can see that I've got some really nice rich sepia there that I've picked up from the palette. I'm using my large Chinese bamboo haki brush to just get the paint on the paper, add more water to get it to flow and then using the tips of the brush to add in some sort of details and shapes to the clouds. Now I've tilted my board around to stop it running down too much just yet because I want to make sure that I've got everything working horizontally first. So as I say, I've tilted my board and now I'm going to put in a quick sweep of dry brush across the, the, um, the foreground for the sea, making sure that I keep some nice sparkle across the sea, um, like the sort of light twinkling on it as the storm approaches. So now it's settled a little bit, so I've turned it round the right way. You can see it's still running down, but it's running down in a more controlled way. So now I'm just going to use the flat brush and um, pull across near the horizon line and just soften out um, where the sea and the sky meet using my flat brush. My flat brush is clean and damp, and as you can see, as I run it straight across the horizon line, then the paint that's already running down the page and creating my storm runs a little bit further down and comes down and actually will meet that horizon line and hopefully give me that wonderful approaching rainstorm effect. And I think that looks about right, so I'm going to lay it flat so the sky and paint doesn't move anymore and it should dry more or less like that, but a bit lighter. While it's drying, um, I'd just like to say that um, I really sincerely think that one of the most important things to learn when you're starting out with watercolour landscape painting and skies in particular is to know when to stop um, and then just let watercolour sort of do its thing and dry naturally. Um, now, I haven't really done much to this wash. Um, gravity, water, paint um, has done everything really here. And I'm quite happy with that because I can see that this sky is going to dry quite nicely. It's going to look quite realistic. If I were to try and add more clouds and things like that through lifting out or using a tissue or adding more paint, then I could end up with something that looks a bit contrived and a bit overworked. So I think it's a really important thing to do to be able to stop, walk away and let it dry and not touch it until it's completely dry. Well, it's now completely dry and I'm very happy with it. It's dried a lot lighter but it's dried beautifully smooth with some lovely dramatic darks and that nice bright unpainted paper sparkle um, across the ocean. And I don't really need to do very much more to it um, but I think just to bring it together I think 
I'm going to just take a sort of greyish brownish mixture again just just all the paint that's left on my palette and my flat brush and pull across um, sort of a narrow distant headland I try to make sure that I get some aerial perspective here and paint it sort of fairly pale so that it looks quite distant there's a temptation to paint something like this really really dark but then that would I think draw too much attention to the headland and as it is uh, this is a sky painting and that's where I want all the attention to go I just want the headland to work as a sort of linking device to link the sea and the sky together I think that'll do for the size of the headland. Um, I think now I just want to darken up a bit while it's still wet with some slightly darker mixture, mostly this is Payne's Grey, um, where the headland and the sea meet. That should just softly diffuse and will give me just a little bit of shadow and a little bit of form to that distant headland, but without drawing too much attention to it. And I think the last thing I'm going to do to this really quick sky practice that's actually taken less than 10 minutes to paint, um, I'm going to use my small calligraphy brush and a mixture of Payne's Grey and Sepia. I'm going to paint in a few gulls. I don't want too many and I don't want them too large. I'm painting these ones over this paler area of the sky. And then I'll take some white gouache and I will paint some white gulls against the darker areas of the sky. So I'm taking my time. I keep thinking maybe there and then changing my mind and sort of then choosing an appropriate place for a gull. I, mean, I don't want to have too many of them, but I would like to have enough to kind of, to look as if they are purposefully painted, if you know what I mean. And to that effect, I'm now taking my white gouache and the gulls painted against this really dark cloud should look quite effective should actually work to pull the other gulls together into the painting a bit more, especially if I put a little dash of white over some of their wings. Don't want to overdo the gulls, but um, I think they're working really, really well with the colours, um, the tones and all the sort of um, the light and the dark that I've got in my sky and on my sea. So that light is now, and darkness is now reflected in the gulls. Just one more, I think. And I'm quite happy with that as, as a sky practice. Um, so I'm gonna remove the tape and have a look and see how it looks um, with its clean white border. Um, so this is the kind of thing that I like to practice every day, different types of sky. Sometimes it's just a completely plain flat wash for a sky. I think it's just as important to be able to paint gentle, very plain, nondescript skies as it is to be able to paint sort of dramatic skies filled with atmosphere. So if we zoom in and take a closer look, I hope you can see how um, the different parts of the sky wash are all working together and the effects that I got from gravity and the tilt of the board um, are working very much in my favour to give me that effect that I was looking for of the storm blowing in over the headland and across the sea. I suppose it's really the calm before the storm in a way as the sea itself looks so calm. 
So thanks very much for watching. I hope that was helpful and, um, and that you'll maybe try this sort of a painting uh, for yourself at some point. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.